by 1963, prayer was taken out of our schools. Anybody remember that? Madeline Murray O'Hare. 1963 is when we saw a great rise in premarital sex for every single age group. Since 1963, we've seen a great rise in sexually transmitted diseases for kids 10 to 14 years of age. We've seen a great rise in unwed birth rates. That's a 100% increase in birth rates. There's been a 500% increase in pregnancies. The difference is being aborted. I'll cover that on video four. Right now, one third of all the kids born at the hospital are born to a couple that is not married. Illegitimate children. Now listen carefully. If you are one of those, God loves you and can use you in a powerful way. You know, Timothy never should have been born. The Jews weren't supposed to marry anybody outside the Jewish race. Timothy's mother married a Greek. Timothy's the result. He said, God, I want to serve you. God said, okay, son, I'll take you. So if your parents messed up, you listen carefully. You shut your mouth and quit your whining and go serve God with your life. No excuses, okay? There's been a 725% increase in unmarried couples living together. God's word hasn't changed. Whoremongers and adulterers, God will judge. He said, thou shalt not commit adultery. And Jesus said, if you even look in lust, you've committed adultery already in your heart. By the way, ladies, that's why it's important how you dress, okay? My daddy always said, if you're not in business, don't advertise. There's been an incredible rise in divorce rates until they finally just stopped getting married. And then divorce rates dropped off because why you can't get divorced because you're not, you're not married. Right? The violent crimes have increased nearly 1,000% since 1963. Now, I'm not that old, but I remember the days when you did not have to lock your house. Anybody remember those days? And you left the keys in the ignition all the time. You never took them out because you might lose them. And you go to the average high school, and half the pickup trucks in the parking lot had a loaded rifle hanging in the back window, and nobody got shot in school back in those days. You probably didn't hear about this, but the kids at Columbine that shot everybody were strong believers in evolution. They did the shooting on Hitler's birthday on purpose. They shot Isaiah just because he was black. Hitler hated black people. We cover that on video four. They shot uh, Rachel and Cassie just because they were Christian. And right after the shooting, Rosie O'Donnell got on her program and said, See, we need more gun control. Uh, Rosie, those kids broke 18 gun laws going into that school. Two more gun laws would not have slowed them down. See, Rosie can't figure it out. But one guy figured out the whole thing and put it on the tire cover on his van. I saw that. I said, I have got to get a picture of this. This explains it all. He said, blaming guns for Columbine is like blaming spoons for Rosie O'Donnell being fat. <laughs> not the spoon's fault, Rosie. Okay. Anyway. <laughs> SAT scores <laughs> have plummeted since 1963. They finally had to dumb down the test in 95 to make the scores go back up to make the kids look smarter. Teen suicide rate has gone crazy. Now look, if I told you, <clears throat> if you kissed a frog, it would turn to a prince. You say, no, frogs don't turn to princes. How many of you ladies got your husband by kissing a frog? Come on now, let me see. Only two, okay. <laughs> Doesn't happen very often. But in the textbooks it does. Yes, boys and girls, we started like an amoeba. And we slowly evolved to a frog. There he is, Grandpa. And then very slowly evolved to a prince. <laughs> it's the same, same fairy tale. Frog turns to prince. But see, instead of a kiss, no, they got a new magic ingredient. If the frog turns to the prince quickly, we all know it's a fairy tale. But if the frog turns to the prince slowly, that's modern science. It's the same fairy tale, folks, but they have a new magic ingredient. The new ingredient to turn the frog to a prince is billions and billions of years. How many have ever heard that expression before? Billions of years ago. It's on TV. It's on Carol Pagan's, Sagan's uh, show, Cosmos. Billions and billions of years ago. It's in the magazines. It's a national pornographic. I'm mean, geographic. No. Billions and billions of years ago. Here's a fourth grade textbook. Millions of years ago. Now, kids, listen. If anybody ever says, millions of years ago, just say, uh, excuse me, were you there? 
They'll say, well, no, of course I wasn't there. And you can say, now, teacher, do you know the Earth is millions of years old? I mean, is this really part of science? Is this something we can observe and study and test and demonstrate in the laboratory? Or is this just something people believe? They're going to say, well, everybody believes the Earth is millions of years old. <laughs> no, they don't. Most Americans think the Earth is less than 10,000 years old and God made it. Only 4% are atheistic. I think that 4% ought to go start themselves a private school and teach evolution to anybody that wants to pay and come learn it. And they ought to get it out of our public schools. That's my unbiased opinion. Yeah. One textbook author said, this, the results of this and other similar surveys are startling because evolution's been a settled issue in science for 150 years. Maybe it's settled in his little brain. It is true that slightly more than half of the scientists believe in evolution. Those are the ones that have not been to my seminar yet. Okay. But even if a bunch of scientists believe in something, that doesn't make it true. There was a time when the scientists taught the planets go around the earth. There was a time when the scientists taught big rocks fall faster than little rocks. That was taught for 2,000 years, and it's not true. They fall the same speed. They used to teach, if you're sick, you have bad blood. Take out your blood and you'll get better. That's how George Washington died. They had special places all over the country to get your blood taken out. You could tell where they were because they had a white pole with a red stripe around it. The barber was the blood letter. Still is today, sometimes. And right beside George Washington, when they bled him to death, was a Bible that told him the life of the flesh is in the blood. Man, if they'd have read that verse, he might still be alive today. <laughs> well, he'd live longer, okay? Now listen, if you went scuba diving and you found a treasure chest full of gold coins, and I asked you the simple question, when did the boat sink? And you say, oh, I don't know. Well, look at the dates on the coins. See, if there's a coin in there from 1750, you ought to be able to figure out the boat sank after 1750. How many can figure this out with no help? Okay. It couldn't sink before that, right? You don't go poking around in the box and find the oldest coin. You find the youngest coin. And that becomes what is called the limiting factor. The boat could not be older than that. Couldn't have sunk before that. There are all kinds of ways to limit the age of the Earth to less than billions of years. Hmm. Now, if you find a dinosaur bone, like the one I've got in my museum, a dinosaur toe bone, you should notice two things about it immediately. Number one, it does not talk. Number two, it does not have a date stamped on it. It does not say, made by a dinosaur, 70 million B.C. in Taiwan. <laughs> it doesn't say that, okay? So how do you tell the age of a fossil? How would you tell the age of the earth? Go outside and get a shovel full of dirt and tell me how old it is. Well, the only way to tell for sure how old something is is to ask the guy who made it. Now, he knows for sure. And the Bible says God created the heaven and the earth. So I bet God knows how old it is. And the Bible tells us in Colossians that Jesus created heaven and earth. 